Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 13 for chapter 5 and the topic for the chapter is the Laplace transform. In the previous videos we have already encountered the unit step functions and using that to represent piecewise continuous function and we also talked about the Laplace transform of the step function and the very important and useful the second shift theorem. Okay, so let me um, summarize before we um, move on to solving differential equations using these concepts. Okay, so we have first the property Laplace transform of a unit step function which takes a step at c bigger than zero is e to the negative cs 1 over s. And then there's the second shift theorem that is um, if you denote the Laplace transform of a function f of t to be capital F of s then you can construct this function which is a shifted function of the function f and then the Laplace transform of this shifted function equal to the transform of the unshifted function times an exponential function e to the negative cs where the c is the amount of shift here okay and then this relation can also be written in a reversed way that is and if this is the laplace transform of that then the inverse laplace transform of this is exactly that so that's what we wrote here Okay, and this will be very useful um, for solving differential equation. Okay, so in the previous video, we um, focused on finding Laplace transform of uh, functions with uh, um, possible discontinuity or piecewisely defined function. Now in this video, we will focus on um, how to find the inverse Laplace transform um, here this will possibly in the end give function that's piecewisely defined. Okay, let's take our first example. F capital F of S is 1 minus e to the negative 2s over s cube. Okay, so we can break this into two terms. The first term is 1 over s cube, which we know how to find the inverse transform, and the second one is and this one over that, so e over negative 2s times 1 over s cube. Okay, so here we already um, know we will use the knowledge that the inverse transform of 1 over s cube is a half t square. Mm -hmm. So the first term, the inverse transform, would just give us half t square. What about this second term? Well, we see that and the second term will be this function here and um, with a shift by two units. So what you have to do is uh, multiply it by u2 of t times, think this is a function f of t and you want to write it of f of t minus two. That is, whatever you have t, you replace it with t minus 2. So it would be half t minus 2 square. Okay, and then this becomes the um, inverse Laplace transform for this function f here, which contains a unit step function, um, which takes a step at um, t equals 2. So we know that this function is um, possibly having a discontinuity at t equals 2. Okay, then we can um, write it out um, piecewisely on intervals that the function is continuous. Okay, so um, so the discontinuity will be at t equals two, and then for t less than two and bigger than zero on this interval, u two t is zero. I will just have the first term, so I'll just get that, and then when t is bigger than two the u2t is 1, then I'll put in 1 and I'll get this expression, which is just this one with this replaced with 1. 
Okay, so now you see clearly that f of t is a piecewisely defined function and is discontinuous at t equals 2. Okay, let's take another example. f of s equals e to the negative 3s over s squared plus 7s plus 12. Okay, so we see that we can factorize this polynomial here and you recognize 12 is 3 times 4 and 3 plus 4 is 7. So this can be factorized as s plus 4 times s plus 3. Okay, and then we know that um, we need to do partial fraction to break this into sum of two fractions which uh, we can each take inverse transform. So it's a over s plus 4 plus b over s plus 3 where a and b are to be determined such that this one exactly equals that one. Okay, so um, we have talked extensively about um, partial fractions, so I will not go into the details here, and uh, we will find a is negative 1 and b is 1. Okay, so now let's take the inverse Laplace transform, and we see that um, we can first neglect this term, which gives us the shift. We can work out the Laplace transform of these two first. Okay, so um, we know that each will give us um, exponential function. So since a is negative 1, then the first term will give us negative e to the negative 4t. Right? And then the second term, b is 1, then I'll have plus an e to the negative 3t. Okay, so this would be the inverse transform of the um, unshifted function. And now this is multiplied by that, that means we have to shift by 3 units in t and multiply by u3 of t and then this expression here, wherever you have t, you need to replace it with t minus 3. So that's what we wrote here. We put t minus 3 and t minus 3 for this function and that is the um, the um, inverse Laplace transform for this function with uh, this term. Okay, we can also practice writing it into a piecewise continuous function using the fact that u3 is 0 for t less than 3. So for t less than 3, I just have 0. And then for t bigger than 3, this is 1. Then I'll just get this part. So I'll get that. Okay, so clearly you see a discontinuous function here. Okay, so here is another example. f of s is s times e to the negative s over s squared plus 4s plus 5. And then um, we can um, move this term e to the negative s in the front because we know in the end this will just contribute to a shift. Okay? And then we rewrite this uh, fraction s over s squared plus 4s plus 5 as follows. F first, we manipulate the denominator, write it as s plus 2 squared plus 1. Okay, Because you break 5 into 4 plus 1, and then the 4 together with the um, first two terms becomes a perfect square. And then we recognize that if the denominator is this, then the inverse Laplace transform could be sine and cosine with the um, exponential function. This is the real part, will give you the exponential function. Okay? And then um, if you want it to be a cosine, then you will have s plus 2 on the top. And uh, if you have a constant on the top, it will give you a sine times the exponential function. Okay, so therefore we break this up into two fractions and uh, one with s plus 2 on the top and the other with uh, negative 2 on the top. Okay, now we take the inverse Laplace transform. We know that this will just contribute to a shift. So let's find out the inverse transform of what's in the bracket here without shifting first. So we see that um, 
for the first term, this will become an um, exponential function e to the negative 2t. The 2 comes from here, and then cosine of t is cosine 1 times t. Okay, so this is the imaginary part. Okay, and then the second term becomes negative 2. So if it's 1 over on the top, we get e to the negative 2t times sine t. Okay, so then the inverse Laplace transform of the function f of s here will be this function shifted by one unit. Okay, therefore you multiply by u1 of t and then wherever you have t, replace it with t minus 1. So t minus 1, t minus 1, which we get that. And then here, this is t minus 1, this is t minus 1, and we get that. Okay, also we can rewrite this as a piecewise continuous function and using the fact that u of t is a unit step function at 1. So for t less than 1, it's just 0. And then for t bigger than 1, you replace this with 1, and you just get this part. We copy here. Here I took out the exponential function as a common factor and collect the sine cosine together. Okay, so this is the last example I have prepared. And uh, now um, we also learned how to take inverse Laplace transform for um, functions f of s containing this exponential term, which in the end gives us um, shifted function, which becomes discontinuous. Okay. So we know that this is an important step in solving differential equations. The final step is the inverse Laplace transform. Now, with all the preparation in the next video, we'll start talking about how to solve um, differential equations, the initial value problems with uh, discontinuous and source terms using um, this kind of a Laplace transform and inverse Laplace transform. Okay, so um, that's all and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.